Welcome to episode 73 of the LOTD pod, and uh, bringing us in is The Time Worm by Richard Shirk, and I'm Flick. Joining me is... Hey, it's the artist who wrote and recorded The Time Worm. It's Richard Shirk from Oakland, California. And uh, and speaking of uh, of The Time Worm by Richard Shirk, it's from the album uh, with, with uh, Clairvoyance, which you can find... Uh, among other places on Bandcamp, but I mentioned Bandcamp because on this edition we're going to be uh, discussing bands that we discovered through Bandcamp. It's going to be so much fun. So yeah, if you like the tune, I've got three records that came out pretty recently. I won't. And, I, won't I won't give you the hard sell. You can look for them if you want to. And and I hope I'm not mistaken on this, but uh, are we coming up on a, a Bandcamp Friday this coming Friday? I think so, yeah. Um, I usually find out about those um, the day or so before, but I, I think I think it may be another Bandcamp Friday. Okay, yeah, because I, I think it's the first Friday of each month, isn't it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, let's. You've got to give me warning about these. Things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it uh, wasn't thinking about it, but but let me see if I can find something about that quickly. Uh, something else, though, to mention uh, for timeliness today would have been uh, Lou Reed's 79th birthday, so uh, we want to uh, celebrate that today. But also next week uh, we will be focusing on Lou Reed and uh, doing a deep dive on on the music of Lou Reed. Yeah, and, and that's going to include uh, Velvet Underground. And the idea is we're going to pick out some really good deep cuts that may not show up on on whatever greatest hits playlist you're, you're looking at. And yeah, uh, uh, Lou Reed at 79, man, he would be even crankier than he was <laughs> when he was with us. Yeah, more cantankerous. Yeah, if possible. Watch out. Okay, so March 5th, yes. March 5th will be a Bandcamp Friday. Uh, so do you have the uh, the deets on on exactly what, what that means? Uh, I have the broad strokes. So basically, uh, normally when you sell music or an al- a physical album from uh, Bandcamp, they take a cut. And uh, Bandcamp Friday is uh, when they when they don't do that. So it's it's really really nice for the artist, and uh, totally encourage everyone to to take advantage of it. Give back to all the artists that are out of work uh, during this uh, almost one year of pandemic quarantine. I'm, I think I'm on day three five two quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I'm just about there with you. Uh, but yeah, so so Bandcamp Friday is coming up. If you're listening to this uh, early in the week, uh, although we won't really be releasing this until Wednesday. So if you're listening to us on Wednesday, uh, maybe maybe wait a couple of days before you uh, make any purchases based on, on what we talk about or anything else you want to purchase on Bandcamp. Uh, maybe you hold on. And if you're uh, listening to us on Friday, uh, waste no time at all. Get right over to Bandcamp. That's right. That's right. And get yourself a copy of With Clairvoyance by Richard Sherr. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> and I, I wrote it. But I still listen to it. That's how I know. That's how I know. And, and we all do, because it, uh, if nothing else, uh, you have heard a little bit of it just a few minutes, just minutes ago. That's right. You you have to listen to it every week. <laughs> okay. So so yeah, we will be discussing bands that we have discovered on Bandcamp. Uh, this is Richard's idea that um, that you know we're running with uh, basically uh, just just finding bands that uh, need are on Bandcamp and need a little bit more love. And if you, anything you want to add to it about the uh, premise? Yeah. Um, so back in the day when artists needed pretty much a label to record and distribute their music there were a lot of obscure bands that never got recorded never got listened to after they broke up but um now like it's it's really easy to do all of your home recording on your laptop on your telephone what have you and put that put out really great sounding records for people uh but because a lot of people are doing it on their own, maybe you know the it, it doesn't get 
really noticed beyond a social circle or you know family uh and since people aren't playing music out anymore and won't be for a little while uh i think that has even uh, exacerbated the 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 obscurity of some artists so it's really fun to go out there and be like okay well i know i know a lot of artists that i think of as independent you know and and, and just because you do have label support doesn't mean you're not independent but yeah i mean you know like mitski or something like it wonderful artist cool records but for every mitski there are like 1000 people at least recording really cool albums that are going to get heard by maybe 20 people a year so our premise was to go out on this band camp scavenger hunt and scoop up some of those records and and take a listen to them and tell yeah. you yeah yeah and and it's something that uh, i think we'll do from time to time in the future as well as uh tonight um first though uh we we have some new music we want to discuss uh it, another month has passed we're just getting into march and uh uh we talked a little bit about new music in in january and so this will be kind of our our uh february roundup um do you want to do you want to take the lead on this yeah yeah so um yeah, I I love just combing through the new releases and checking things out. Usually on Spotify, but you know I, I get I get tips from pals, and um, if I if I position the antenna on my transistor radio just right by the radiator, I can pick up Calix pretty well from uh, from Cal Berkeley. Uh, so yeah, I got some got some good jams, a couple good singles. Uh, the one that I was really excited about and have been listening to a lot is an album by Nick Cave and Warren Ellis that came out last Friday called Cartage. Have you have you heard this record yet, Sean? I haven't I haven't heard it yet, no. So I think I think Sean and I are at different levels of fandom for for Nick Cave. I, I love the birthday party. I love Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. I've read his books. I, I see him live whenever I can. And um, but if you're not if you're not a super fan, one thing that you probably don't know is that you've you've probably heard a a couple albums worth of music by Nick Cave, as one of his uh, sidelines lately has been um, with Warren Ellis to uh, be kind of a in demand uh, group for soundtracks for motion pictures. So. Uh, movies like, uh, let's see, The Proposition, uh, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford, uh, The Road, Lawless, the uh, really fun but kind of goofy Mars uh, series on National Geographic, Hell or High Water, War Machine, Wind River, Kings, and a few others. So um warren ellis is uh, a weird little guy uh he is also australian and uh has an enormous beard so and is uh <laughs> kind of comes off looking kind of like um, an elf but he's, he's really well dressed too so he's like a really well dressed elfin guy from australia and if you ever see him live he's just a a really just like Nick Cave, you know, those are two musicians that are impossible to take your eyes off of. Warren Ellis with uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds plays uh, a lot of um, kind of synthy keyboards, but also just wails on, um, I believe it's a viola, not a violin. And in uh, The Dirty Three, uh, he just tears it up on making giant walls of sound with his violin and lots of effects pedals so normally they collaborate in the context of nick gave and the bad seeds but uh this is the first album where they've um that isn't film music that they've they've made together and they made this together in quarantine and it's totally a a, a, a quarantine record where um uh, Warren is playing everything. Nick Cave is singing everything. 
and and the jams are are really big and the the lyrics are just uh kind of scary as as you would expect from nick cave so you have songs talking about you know the 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 global health crisis and in really uh personal ways uh there's a song called balcony man about you know uh when you're home alone all day and just kind of kind of acting like a house cat keeping an eye on things um there's some songs about you know like reframing what's happening in the world in kind of a, a scary biblical kind of way so uh hand of god is such a, a great lead off track and uh a song called carnage is less scary but lyrically maybe more scary so yeah it's uh it's a the first half of the the eight songs are kind of like loud and and uh and a you know big wall of noise and then some of the other songs are really pretty and and uh and uh but but are also you know tying the tying the whole thing together so if you like nick cave this is a you know an album for you okay and if you're just starting with nick cave is it a a good entry point or would you say uh it's kind of for those who are already already pretty much engaged with his music uh you know there are a couple of different varieties of people that are kind of i would say like nick cave curious and if you're uh someone who knows uh, a song like uh into my arms or the boat song song or um where the wild roses grow uh, I, would, I would definitely start with track six, which is Lavender Fields, which is a, really showcases how pretty uh, a Nick Cave song can be and kind of plaintive and also well-written. But if you're like a... If, if you've heard Nick Cave through like Red Right Hand, which is on a, a, lot, a lot of soundtracks, I think it's the Peaky Blinders uh, theme song or something like that, then uh, yeah, you can just jump right into it with um, this totally loud, awesome song called "Hand of God." So <laughs> watch out. All right. Um, okay. So yeah, my my big album. I, I have a few tracks, you know, that I want to talk about as well. But I really just have one album I'm focusing on. Oh, uh, what, what album is that? Uh, that is uh, "Open Door Policy" by The Hold Steady. Um. Love the Hold Steady. Uh, they're you know like they're Brooklyn by, by way of of Minneapolis, but very Minnesota. Uh, so I'm you know I'm very uh, you know like Minnesota it isn't really where I'm from. I live there a short amount of time, but it just feels like my uh, spiritual home, I guess maybe. Yeah. And, how long did you live there? Uh, like a year and a half. Uh, but uh, but you know before that year and a half and and especially after that year and a half just continued to spend a lot of time there uh so it, it's just it's i guess my home away from home but maybe my real home in in so many ways it's where it's where my heart is um so you know like like uh you know somebody like craig finn is somebody who is very there's there's a very familiar fam, uh, well maybe familial uh sort of feeling i have for him um you know he, he really uh i i don't know i i I, lo- I think i'd love him no matter where he's from he, he's uh he's he's really one of the great storytellers of music these days um of of this of the millennium and uh you know one of uh, as far as music goes anyway one of music's uh, great storytellers and and uh, always very literate always very witty and insightful and just great at conveying a story um and uh this i i have to say this is uh i think the best uh hold steady record since boys and girls in america uh, i'm not 
I'm not really saying it's as good as that. I'm not not going to try and uh, put it on that level, but but definitely, I think easily better than everything that uh, has come along since then. Uh, to me, you know, they they made a lot of uh, a lot of records after that. Uh, you know, stay positive in 08. Uh, Heaven is whenever in, in 2010, and and probably especially Teeth Dreams in 2014, that were pretty f- forgettable. Had some nice moments, but oh, overall, gosh. as far as albums, yeah. That, I, but but again, I love them. So so um, I say that with love. Um, but but they weren't the most. Uh, they they weren't the high points. The the first three albums I I love to death, and and. Uh, then the albums that came afterwards had had their moments, but but not really what I would call cohesive and, and interesting albums. But this one really is like this one. I I totally love it, and I'm very happy for uh, such a, uh, a such an effective comeback for them. Yeah, I, I, I like. I haven't I haven't listened to the album all the way through, but and I'm only kind of like barely familiar with. Um, the band's back catalog but what what i do like about them is that you know it, it kind of sounds like uh, an album written by the guy at the coffee shop who wears flannel <laughs> but the minute you start talking to him you know he's just like the most well-read guy in any room you know what i mean yeah yeah, and and uh, yeah, I I think I know exactly what you mean because he's uh, Craig Finn has this quality where he is down to earth, but at the same time, um, he he doesn't. Uh, his lyrics are not commonplace. They're not. Uh, he doesn't say things in the way that the average person says them, but he very much looks like the average guy. I I think if you had a, just a conversation with him, that's the way he would talk to you. You know. Um, but then when he puts pen to paper, he's he's uh, he's really in just another stratosphere. And uh, do you do you know if this album what, was it recorded in quarantine or is this um, is it what, what what's the background of this record? Is it about quarantine? Yeah, to this point, there isn't a place that I've been able to find that. Well, actually, maybe maybe going to Bandcamp. Uh, uh, there there is. A lengthy write-up on that i have haven't been able to find too much information on it uh elsewhere so, I, by the way it's it sounds really cool i i love that you know there's that whole like uh rootsy kind of subgenre of um like yeah band bands with front men who uh wear flannel and and the music has a lot of swagger to it you know yeah well, to answer your question, I, I do see that uh, right right away in the uh, Bandcamp write up that uh, it was recorded in 2019, so pre-pandemic. Uh, they might have pushed it back to to uh, a point where they would be able to tour on it, and you know, pushed it back maybe as far as they could by uh, releasing it in late February. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm totally going to uh, jam on this when I'm playing ping pong. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> you, you're, all, you're always looking for uh, for musical selections for ping pong. That's matches. right. If you listeners out there, if you've got some good ping pong jams, you know, uh, send them our way. 1-800-LEFTOTHEDIALPODCAST.COM <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's right. Well, you, you can <laughs> really, if you want, want to actually correspond with us, I, uh, you can you can find us at uh, left of the dial pod at gmail dot com. So, so uh, never hesitate to uh, to drop us a line there. And uh, I'm I'm uh, or you can be friends with us on Facebook as as individual people. <laughs> That's right. If you're cool. Uh, no, not you. I'm cool. <laughs> People are welcome too. I've, I've no judgment there. So open, you, do, open you, door policy. You can be uncool, but you have to be nice. That's so, like my. That's my only like. You know, yeah. Cut off. I. I, I, so I, the, I like to only be around nice people. So that's Richard's open door policy. <laughs> Sean's like uh, 
a lot. He's he probably just unfriended me from Facebook. <laughs> um, my my I I don't have an open door policy. My door is slightly ajar. <laughs> uh, Sean, I, I feel you're withholding. <laughs> <laughs> But but I do love the album "Open Door Policy" by the uh, it's, it's that's, my, that's nice. That should be on the that should be the sticker on the my blurb. Yeah, yeah that's that's my blurb. Um, I have an open door policy for this record. Nice. <laughs> uh, what are, do you have any more albums you've been listening to that just came out? I've got one, maybe one more, and then I've got a couple tracks and a, a really fun playlist. Well, I, I guess I can mention a few of the tracks um, <laughs> that were on albums that I don't want to recommend, or should I save that for, for when I just straight up talk about tracks? Oh, man, because, I don't know. Okay, cause, okay so Ben Queller, uh, his album Circu- Circuit Boredom, I, I don't feel like is a recommendation as a record. I do like, I do like a few tracks off of it, and uh, put the tr- track Careless on our... Uh, our rotation list on on our Spotify page, oh, which okay, you can yeah. find uh, by going uh, searching LOTD Pod on Spotify. Um, I really don't like the Foo Fighters record, but but the the track "Holding Poison" I, I felt was uh, worthy enough to include in tracks. And, and that's uh, that kind of circles back to our Facebook discussion. Like, uh, yeah, I I don't think I've listened to a Foo Fighters song or album for years, but. It's kind of impossible to not like Dave Grohl because he's such a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, well, and and a great drummer, and uh, and and I I have to say I absolutely love the first two Foo Fighters records. Um, the the rest of them less and less, you know, like diminishing returns after that. But the first first two I totally love. Um, third one is all right, and and then. Then after that, I, I guess, you know, I, I listen to them because I, I feel like it's worth cherry picking the tracks that, that I do like, which I did with this one. There's really probably one track that, but, well, maybe two tracks that I think are worth cherry picking. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I'm not a Foo Fighters aficionado by any stretch, but certainly um, I have plenty of good things to say about those first two records. Yeah, yeah, I, I I saw them after the first record came out at the Fillmore uh, in San Francisco, and yeah, that was, that was a very memorable show. And uh, and then I watched the documentary about him rebuilding like a Neve board at some point. But yeah, <laughs> Sound City. Yeah, yeah, that that's what it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and I I liked I liked Sound City, and I liked their. Uh, uh, what what was their HBO series? Uh, Sonic, Sonic Sonic Highways. Highways. Yeah, I like that too. Which sounds like an Eagles record. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, did you check out that album by uh, Julian Baker that just came out? No, I haven't heard that yet. I I should mention the, the so the uh, Cassandra Jenkins record. Um, are you familiar with that? No. Okay, so it, it's it, there's a lot of a lot of buzz around it, but I I I I, uh, I like it somewhat, but I don't I don't feel that strong about it. But uh, I do like the track Michelangelo. That's also on my playlist. Uh, okay. But but yeah, go on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Julian Baker has a new album called Little Oblivions, which is. Uh, kind of you know i wouldn't say it's like that hard to find there's a new yorker article about it uh can't be that obscure the new yorker is talking about it but um yeah really fun record uh musically i think it's it's really cool it's got kind of that um same kind of feel as uh that last sharon von etten record or um free by cat power when uh, an artist that is normally kind of, you know, in a room with an acoustic guitar, gets a lot of keyboards and drum machines and stuff, but is still a, a good writer. Um, so there's some of that. It has a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of a country feel to the vocals, but then a lot of the songs sound like they could be tracks by The National or something. 
Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to check that one out. I haven't, I haven't uh, gotten to that yet. Yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, she's a really good singer, and sometimes I, I hate to say it, but it's kind of like a barrier to me when um, you hear someone that can just like effortlessly hit a bunch of notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, I think it's I think it's gonna be a grower for me. I haven't really wrapped my mind around it yet. But uh, yeah, Little Oblivions by Julian Baker. I I, I kind of have the feeling that it's going to end up on a lot of year-end best of lists. But a couple, I, I have a couple singles that came out that are just really fun. Uh, did you check out the the Sound and Vision cover by Halado Negro? No, but uh, that will be a good segue for for my my first track that I want to talk about. Okay, well, yeah, um, Halado Negro is uh, a really cool band. Uh, bedroom pop, lots of keyboards and, and drum machines and such, uh, and which is the recording recording name for uh, Roberto Carlo, Carlos Lang. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think you probably heard about uh, This Is How You Smile, which is uh, the last full album. But yeah, nice, tasty um, David Bowie by way of Magnetic Fields cover of Sound and Vision, a uh, new single out. Right okay. Now. All right. So I, I've gone ahead and added that to my Bowie's uh, cover covers playlist. Thank you. Uh, but that, that does remind me like one of uh, my favorite things so far this year. So... Um, Doug March of Built a Spill uh, has something of a side project going called the Boise Cover Band. Uh, they've released a couple of tracks this year. The first one was a, a cover to Ashes to Ashes, which might be my favorite Bowie cover anybody has ever done. Wow. Yeah, so that I strongly recommend. That was earlier, and uh, recently they released a cover of Strange and... Uh, that is on the March rotation list. Uh, Ashes to Ashes w- would have been on, uh, I think, last month's covers for lovers list on our on our Spotify page. Uh, but I, I totally love that. A couple of other tracks that are pretty recent here. Um, uh, Patrick Pentland of Sloan uh, put up, and I, I think I think this safely falls into quarantine recording. Uh, but he has a, a side project called Fuzzed Out, which I think is, you know, probably him recording uh, everything. Uh, good track on that called, uh, or good track that has been released as a single, My Own Worst Enemy. Uh, du Blonde uh, has a good track. I'm glad that we broke up. Uh, Beach Bunnies, I don't think, th- this isn't super recent, but it's this year. And I don't think I've talked about it yet, uh, but uh love beach bunny uh good girls don't get used is the latest track and i i totally recommend it and uh heart low by gene weaver okay i'm gonna listen to those those are good good picks yeah and i, I ha- yeah go ahead oh and i i still have a few more but but uh if you go go on oh uh did you check out the new uh single called free agents by guided by voices yes Oh, it's tasty. Like I I feel like between you know, tunes like this and uh mirrored Aztec from last year, the last year's probably like one of four LPs, I feel like. Um Gotta by Voices are kind of finding their swagger again. Yeah, well, I mean they always do. I I think uh I don't know, I think think old old Bob is always he, you know, he might have only ever thrown one no hitter, but uh, <laughs> but he's good for a he's good for a win here and there always. Yeah, yeah, and they're uh, yeah. It's hard to keep up with these guys. Wow. Yeah, well, that's that's always been the case. Yeah, you have to put in the time. Uh, but but they yeah, there were a lot of good uh, got it by voices tracks. Uh, a lot of tr- tracks I liked in twenty twenty. Um, yeah, and a and a bit. Uh, Always a bit here and there throughout the years. Oh, uh, what is that? Bunko Men, the second track off of Mirrored Aztec. Wow, that's such a cool tune. 
Yeah, we we will have to we we need to do a guided by voices show at some point in the in the future, and uh, well, uh, well Bob uh, doesn't have a birthday until October, so we're gonna have to have an, like an early birthday party or something. I think as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, they're really fun band. As you may remember, they used to be one of my favorite bands in college. Um, and kind of you know saw them on their farewell tour kind of lost track of them for a little bit then uh yeah they're, they seem to be back in full force yeah well i i saw them with you on the farewell tour and then uh i think a couple of years after that saw saw pollard solo uh and his lineup included tommy keen on guitar oh, and yeah. and uh john worster uh who's the drummer for for Super Chunk and and also Bob Mold these days, and uh, Jason Narducci, who's uh, the the bass player for Bob Mold these days. So, excellent band. Um, I saw them at the Abbey in Chicago when I, when oh, I nice. first moved to right. Chicago. Right. Yeah, and then uh, then saw the, the classic lineup a few times, and then uh, then saw the I guess second classic lineup when you when you you know you go back to Doug Gillard and 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 that bunch. Oh yeah, um, Doug Gillard. Yeah, yeah. By the by the way, it, classic lineup's a classic lineup, but but it's it, you know to me Doug Gillard is is like he's the all time uh, GBV guitarist. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I mean, if I had to, you you could do a whole show on on like what's your what's your fantasy lineup for Better by Voices, but yeah, Doug, <laughs> Doug Gillard has to be there. Uh, yeah, I, th- I agree. No I what. think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so another uh, Sharon Van Etten. Speaking of Sharon Van Etten, and Shovels and Rope had a good cover of uh, "In My Room." A lot of people covering "In My Room" these days, and I don't, I don't think that that's a coincidence. Uh, Low Straight Jackets did a good cover of it last year, and I, I think there's somebody else that has already done it uh, this year. In addition to. Uh, to the Sharon Van Etten one. Hold on, I'm, I'm doing too many things at once. A cover of "In My Room" by the Beach Boys. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, and and so a lot of people uh, just decided, yeah, "In My Room" seems pretty appropriate right now. Um, maybe years from now, people are wondering why there's such a high concentration of uh, "In My Room" covers. A little bit. A little bit on the nose, but. Um... Uh, sure. But a great song, one of the all-time great songs. Yeah, wow, yeah. A song that uh, I think has been one of my favorites since I was about five. Um, So I was kind of a melancholy kid, uh, apparently. (laughs) Yeah, your your playlist from that year is such a downer. (laughs) My my age five playlist. Yeah. Uh, That was also the year I got my first bike, so I shouldn't have been too down. But uh, but then again, I, I didn't I didn't probably ride it for a couple of years after I got it because I was uh, well without t- turning wheels anyway. That adds to the melancholy. Uh, I like the uh, the demos for PJ Harvey not as much as the original. So just I guess a quick mention of that, and then I, the final track that I'm going to mention. Um, I don't I, there there are so many. Uh, so many remixes these days and i don't get excited about hardly any of them but the uh the run the jewels uh remix with uh the okay santa fe uh, clan uh the remix of ooh la la is magnifico um it's (laughs) it's it's absolutely great i i i you know if nothing else all of these remixes at least yields that result but normally i don't i don't really care about all of these remixes that are coming out yeah well okay then i feel like that's a a great bunch of songs to you know if you're hanging out if you're playing ping pong you know and you need some some fresh jams and you're just you know there's only so much philip glass you can you can listen to in one week (laughs) is that the normal ping pong soundtrack uh you know it's kind of my one of my go-tos when i'm just like hanging out I, i've been really jamming on um these philip glass 
cello partitas that just won't quit, uh, played by uh, Matt Hamovitz. So yeah, uh, partitas for solo cello just can't stop. <laughs> I, I I have a couple that I don't I almost forgot, but I do want to mention them quickly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's a new uh, track from Dinosaur Jr. I hope that means that there's a new um, Dinosaur Jr. album on the way, but I'm not sure of that. Uh, but uh, but the uh, new track from from uh, Dinosaur Jr. is called "I Ran Away," and it's great. It came out this past weekend. And then there's also a new track out just today from Raining Sound uh, that, you know, I'm hearing it for the first time today, uh, but already, I think, uh, a recommendation for me. And that that is called A Little More Time. Okay, well, thank you for those. You've given me some really good stuff to listen to. And yeah. and that concludes our uh, Left of the Dial podcast. Uh, new release roundup. And now we're going to kind of move on to um, kind of our assignment for the week, which was I thought was really fun. Did you did you have a good time with our assignment, Sean? I did. I did. Um, so the the band that I'm going to talk about. Uh, will, will you reiterate what our assignment was? It was. It was. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. So it's Bandcamp discoveries, which I did. I did make some. Um, we uh, we set out to find uh, bands that that need a little bit more love on uh, Bandcamp. And uh, I guess my journey started a little bit before the assignment started, uh, perhaps. But uh, but basically, you know, like I did, I did make some great discoveries just this past week, and I think um, I think I'm going to put them in the on deck circle. Uh, and and the band that I want to talk about is is a band that actually uh, their album came out in December and I was a fan of it immediately and it was actually one of my top 10 records but they um, looking at the numbers they are not they are definitely a band that is not getting enough love and so I just wanted to make a point to talk about them uh, what band is this and how did you find them so uh, the band is called the High Water Marks, and the um, High Water Marks. Okay. Yeah, and they are from uh, Norway, and uh, yeah, and so I, I guess that's all I'll say for now. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more about that, but but let you you know set up uh, your thing. Well, uh, my the second part of my question: How did you find them? Okay. All right. Uh, the second part. So this was actually a recommendation. Um, oh okay cool yeah and and so yeah it, it was one of those things where it's just like I, I listened to the album and and uh it came out um like i said in december i don't let me see what the actual uh release date would have been yeah it it was enough time just enough time to make my year-end list i don't i don't know exactly what the date what the release date was yeah um they they are a band the uh they are basically made up of a married couple uh hillary sydney and and per ole Bratset. i i hope i'm saying right uh hillary sydney uh was was a drummer in the in a band that you know is is more well known oh, yeah. uh apples and stereo and uh as the high water marks, they put out an album uh, in the aughts too, uh, and and uh, finally followed it up with an album uh, at the end of last year called uh, Ecstasy Rhymes. Yes, I love that album title. <laughs> I haven't seen the <laughs> album yet. You know when you when you see the album cover and you kind of know a little bit about who's who, and then they put out an album called Ecstasy Rhymes. <laughs> It's you know, and you just know you're gonna like it. Yeah, and and uh, yeah. So basically, they're very poppy, very um, you know, it, it it's it's kind of power pop, but also indie. If indie is a sound to you, um, if indie is a sound, I think this is the sound of indie. I guess I'll put it that way. I, I there's a push and pull for me as 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 to whether or not that really describes the sound, but I think you know what I'm getting at. I think I do. Um, yeah, and uh, and her singing voice uh, sounds very much like Juliana Hatfield, and and his singing voice uh, sounds a lot like Doug March of uh, of Built to Spill. 
Uh, so it, so there, it, it's it is something that that has kind of a familiar sound to it. Uh, they aren't, uh, you know, like they aren't reinventing the wheel or anything like that. But it, but the music's great. Every single track on the album is great. Um, and you know, I've already I've already basically recommended it. You know, look looking at the numbers, uh, it, it, it more people need to know about this album. I, I like this band. Uh, as you listeners may remember, Juliana Hatfield is uh, we're we're big fans over here at, at Left of the Dial Podcast dot com one eight hundred Left of the Dial Podcast dot com. <laughs> uh, and I think we implored her to um, cover Abba. Cover, yeah. Didn't we? Didn't we also ask her to? Uh, so we asked her to do a, an album of ABBA covers and maybe an album of Richard Thompson covers. Uh, we didn't, but we can. I, I guess you know, if we might as well just push our luck even further. Yeah, yeah, we might as well because these are dark times. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Got to go for broke. But yeah, That's I like right. this. I like this band a lot. The High Water Marks, um, members of the band from all over the world. And I like that they're, you know, a lot of a lot of like indie rock veterans who are not, you know, not twenty year olds in Brooklyn. It's cool to cool to get the um, the old guard uh, into new groups and and new records out there. So yeah, uh, and it, yeah. yeah, and it definitely, you know, it, it's all pretty pretty do it yourself um even their music videos if you have a chance to watch their music videos on on youtube very very do it yourself um you know so it's it just uh it, you know like to me um maybe a little bit bigger than the other bands i discovered uh on this assignment just but just a little bit and you know definitely not as big as they should be because the quality is so there um but it also definitely encapsulates the the idea I think that we're going for, and it's just the very much doing it for the love of of making music. Um, you know, like they're um, they, they don't have a, a sneaker endorsement. No, I mean not even close. But but everything is just so DIY and but but great. I mean the the songs are. The the songs sound very pro, uh, but but I don't think that there's there anything that uh, they went to the best studios to record or anything like that. Yeah, and I think that sometimes that's how you get the the coolest sound. I remember a story about um, Bruce Springsteen meeting Elvis Costello backstage somewhere, uh, like a big festival, and. Um, Bruce Springsteen had just heard uh, this year's model, and uh, at his at this point in, in Bruce's career, he was like putting hours and hours and weeks and weeks into getting like the right drum sound on "Darkness on the Edge of Town," and that album had already come out. And he comes up to Elvis Costello and he's like, "How did you get that sound? Like that sound is so true, and the guitars are just perfect. The drums sound like drums." uh like what studio did you use what secret what secret can you tell me and elvis costello was like oh yeah we we just set up in a room and turned the amps up and uh <laughs> had too much vodka and and rolled tape so yeah you get so much spontaneity from doing it yourself with you know not putting too much pressure on it just you know rolling tape getting your pals together yeah, sometimes the best way to get get it, uh, to make a drum sound like a drum is just to mic up a drum. That's that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright Sean Flickinger. That's right. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So if you look at you know, like I don't spend much time uh, looking at at uh, what are the uh, the top ranked streams on Spotify, but but for the purpose of this, just to give me an idea of you know how how they were doing uh you know like they're they they have one track that has eight thousand uh streams and then from that then there are two with with four thousand but then it goes down to um mostly twos and ones so definitely not getting enough love yeah i'm seeing that today or yesterday monday march one they had 237 streams from 65 users 
Yeah, so high watermarks. Highly recommended. Love it. Uh, top 10 album for the year 2020. And I, I see the, the release date. It actually came out in November. It uh, came out November 13th. Okay, so, well, yeah, uh, keep me keep me in the, in the loop when they announce tour dates for when when all this mess gets cleared up. Oh yeah, <laughs> rock bands can rock again. <laughs> some some well, you know what? That's that's already uh, apparently something you can legally do in Massachusetts. So maybe and I, I think in Texas because. I guess uh, Governor Abbott just doesn't care about people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In Texas, apparently, you can do everything now. So yeah, watch out, watch out. I love Texas. <laughs> I've been treated so well by Texans. I love Austin. I love Dallas. Spent a lot of time playing music in both places. So, but yeah, you know, uh, as soon as you, the sooner you uh, elect Matthew McConaughey as your governor, the, the better <laughs> off you're going to be. Trust me. Yeah. Green light. Someday. Someday. So, yeah, cool band. Um, you're going to keep me in the loop about their uh, true dates, and uh, I'd love to see them play. Yeah, me too. Looking forward to it. So, uh, anything else you want to add? Or, or do you, are you ready for me to, to reveal my the band that I found on the internet? I, I am ready, yeah. I, I, I'll... Uh... I'll mention a couple of other bands at the end, but I think those are bands that uh, I might save for the next time. Okay, suspense. Okay, keep yeah. them. You know, that's how you keep a podcast uh, revenue stream. Gotta gotta tease that next show. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking. You know, both uh, Flick and I spent a lot of time in Iowa, and Flick, you're still in in Iowa. Yeah, too uh, much time in Iowa, probably uh, you know, for me. <laughs> uh, we've already offended Texas, so let's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live here, so <laughs> you're allowed. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, but um, I, I had a really great time in, in living in Iowa, and um, found a lot of cool bands that were playing in our little our college town, Iowa City. And before that, I lived in a uh, college town for Iowa State, Ames, Iowa, and found a little, few little bands there. And I think that my, my personal theory is that there are a lot of parts of the country that uh, a lot of people kind of write off as like flyover states or just like, you know, out of the way places that, that they just don't think about, don't want to go to. And in all those places, there are cool indie rockers and, and cool um, independent musicians of all sorts. And I think that they end up finding each other. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that in every state that gets called a flyover state, there are like two or three weird cities where all the cool kids know that that's where they should end up. And so my mission in trying to find... Um, a pretty obscure band on Bandcamp was to uh, do do a, a really localized search because Bandcamp is pretty advanced. You can uh, search by state. So uh, did kind of a quick survey of uh, bands in Wyoming and, and found some good bands, and then uh, decided to keep going and found uh, a lot of good bands in Montana. So. Um, and Montana was kind of the jackpot, so no, no offense to musicians in Wyoming, but uh, <laughs> a couple a couple tracks really stood out uh, for me. And um, you know, I, I think the the one that really really caught my ear and was just a really solid record all the way through was uh, this band. The band is called uh, Bombshell Nightlight. And the album is called Blue Heron Above Me. And uh, if, you've, if you're a regular listener to this show, you know that I really like the band Magnetic Fields. I really like the band uh, Destroyer. And just in general, I, I, I'm a huge enthusiast of people that are going to record things themselves and invite their friends over to play the parts that they can't play. And this is totally an illustration of of that in action um a, a really fun punchy 38 minute album of um 
really introspective but poppy songs with lots of uh, 80s keyboards and drum machines and uh, some of the songs, you know, are um, about, you know, uh, you know, yesterday I woke up in my room, uh, kind of I, bedroom pop, I think, is a whole genre, arguably, going back to our discussion of Palato Negro. Um, and this is this is totally bedroom pop because you, you can almost like hear the you, you can you can hear the hear the nightlight, you know, it's, uh, it's very palpable. And but these are also uh, you've got some really solid hits on here. Some legitimate legitimate earworms. Uh, so yeah, check out uh, Slow Burner and check out New Shoes. Really strong ending with uh, this pop tune called uh, New Sheets. And kind of a, a yacht rock uh, guitar lead line on that. But you know, one of the things I really like about uh, discovering bands like this is sometimes you kind of see that they're part of a little scene. So uh, due to the fortuitous timing of our recording, we were going to record yesterday, but we decided to record today. And then yesterday evening, um, the, uh, the LP that I ordered from this group showed up. And uh, it's gorgeous olive colored vinyl and lyric sheet and lots of stickers and free downloads and uh kind of like a promotional pamphlet for the little tiny indie label that they are part of which is called uh anything bagel and um i've checked out uh their compilation there's um a compilation called it's complicated which has uh a lot of should be called it. It's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> That's my my dad joke for the night. Hey, you keep them coming, man. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, um, th this group is uh, pretty much the solo project of a guy named John Cardelio, and uh, he's a songwriter, the recording guy, uh, does a lot of the singing, and then he's just helped out by a bunch of people. Um, I think uh maybe his sister and looks like probably a bunch of his roommates in the big house in helena montana uh and then the anything bagel group record group is based out of missoula and there's some really tasty tracks on here um uh, this lp came with a download for uh, an album called one on one by fantasy suite and uh yeah it's it's like another it, kind of messy fun home recorded thing lots of people recording in the basement yeah and i i looked this over on on sunday night and and i don't know if i have this right but basically like he, he plays a part in in uh the same guy plays a part in bombshell nightlight and anything bagel and then all of these other bands too right i think so yeah i'm still trying to string it together because um you know, Fantasy Suite and Bombshell Nightlight, very much like a, a great bill at a, you know, cool club, right? And uh, and then there's an artist called Zinnia, and that's, you know, more more like 80s keyboards. That seems to be a little bit of a through line. But then, uh, you know, there's also, I, I heard some kind of like auto-tuned, like hip-hop stuff in there, too, so... It, the compilation that it's complicated it's complicated how do, how do you how do you say that again Jim? it's complicated complicated um so yeah it, it's like a really interesting group of people and um and i love this record it it is um it's poppy but it's also uh, a little bit dark um uh, you know there there's some Places that uh, John goes in his lyrics that are a little bit uncomfortable, uh, you know, like uh, I think one one song is uh, called "Death Day Part Two, which actually turns into a kind of a, a cool pop song. But you know, it's like it was the anniversary of your death again. You know, like ooh, that's that's not that's not as poppy as it could be. <laughs> it's, 
but I, I respected, you know, he, he's talking about his, ex his experience and, um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm kind of used to a lot of artists that are a couple step removed or like shielded or shield themselves from revealing things like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, interesting find. I, I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time on on their their stuff, but it was uh, pretty interesting. And uh, I I don't know. For me, it was kind of useful to go to that uh, that compilation that they had, and you can kind of get a sense of that whole collective that they have going on. You know, my thinking was um, that anything bagel is really the uh, the alias of someone named Anthony Bagel. Mm. And whenever, whenever he's at the DMV, they like, they mix up his name, <laughs> and that and that became like his uh, nom de rock. Well, if if your uh, if your last name is Bagel, you should have some kind of nickname tied to uh, some kind of Bagel related nickname. That's true. That's true. But you know, being anything as opposed to everything bagel probably says a lot about his personality yeah yeah i i i'm a big fan and it was, it was cool just to you know aside from co-hosting the show with you and you know reading pitchfork media for like 25 seconds a day um you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to to really check in with uh, what's going on out there. Uh, you know, it used to be that I would discover a lot of bands by going to see one band and then you see the opening band and uh, kind of tracing it out from there. Or, mm -hmm. you know, hanging out in record stores and, and, and listening to what cool... Uh, cool people are, are listening to but um, yeah the the tentacles or the tentacles uh are kind of atrophying these days because of because of quarantine maybe yeah yeah maybe that's part of it uh maybe it's just not being you know uh a rambunctious uh teenager 20 something year old anymore but um but yeah always always have my ear out but uh Pretty, pretty few and far between. I think the last band that I I had a big revelation about was maybe like Woods, you know, a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't know. Like for me, it's always a necessary thing to keep that going as much as possible. But it it, it does get tough, um, you know. So it, it I don't know. For me, uh, having this show to do definitely keeps me. Um, putting in max effort to do that um yeah but this this is a fun thing to do and i i think we you know should keep on uh going back to this every now and then um it, it for me it was pretty interesting because uh my discoveries were you know like i i i think it's cool to to uh to go to the as you said flyover states for me i i went pretty much to europe you know like uh norway and and then also found a lot of interesting stuff in Sweden, a lot, um, and uh, and also Berlin. Uh, so, you know, like I, I will have plenty more to talk about. I, I don't think I'll go too much in depth on that uh, until till the next time we do this. Okay. Yeah. Next time, maybe I'll go to like. Um, so we've been to Wyoming. We've been to Montana. We'll go to uh, maybe a Dakota. Yeah, I, go, think, I think it's well established that there's plenty in Idaho, as we were just talking about with uh, yeah, built to spill. with with built to spill, yeah. But uh, but yeah, this was really fun, and uh, yeah, I totally encourage our listeners to uh, go out and find their their new favorite record just by spending. It took me all of like ten minutes to find this really cool band, and um, you know, another joy of finding real independent music on uh ben camp or you know wherever else um i ordered the lp and all the money went to the artist and then when i got the lp mailer in the box it was like a little note from them in sharpie that was cool <laughs> you don't you don't get that all the time yeah that's right it's yeah it's one of the the cool things about uh band camp uh so 
you know, again, uh, we have there's a <laughs> it's like we have as if I'm running band camp, uh, but but uh, there is a band camp uh, Friday coming up this Friday, and yeah, I'm not affiliated with band camp, so uh, our phone I, banks are I, open. What do you understand? Yeah, camp? <laughs> I, I just think it's a good idea, so so I think it's worth promoting, yeah. And so, the, the official uh, uh, phrasing of it is that um. Bandcamp is waiving our revenue share, they say, in order to help artists and labels impacted by the pandemic. So the first time they did that was um, March 20, 2020. And the, the Bandcamp community showed up spending $4.3 million on music. So, um, yeah, it's really big. You know, uh, if you've ever been a, a truly broke, uh, musician trying to put uh, gas in the tank or whatever, um, you know, it, it could really mean someone something to someone if you if you show up and and spend a little bit of your money to help out musicians that are uh, not able to do their job because of the the pandemic. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, now more than ever, like I think that's always a very um, very much part of the musician's life. Um, but yeah, certainly now more than ever. Definitely. So yeah, and I, I really enjoyed our scavenger hunt. Like I thought that was a, a lot of fun. We'll have to do this again. Yeah, definitely, definitely, we'll be doing this again. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I think there's so many more, so many more things to discover out there. So, so tell me more. Uh, remind me of what we're doing in the next few weeks. Okay, so next week, uh, Lou Reed, the birthday boy. Um, well, <laughs> he, he hates he it would, when you call him. <laughs> yeah, he, he he would be the birthday boy. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, we're we're going to be doing a deep dive and and going to the uh, the deep cuts, the uh, you know some rarities, some off the wall things. We will, you know, who knows what we're going to come up with. But it's Lou Reed, so it's all going to be good. Okay, so, um, and the boundaries are, it's not going to be like the greatest hits that you, you're going to find everywhere. It's going to be really cool, obscure stuff. Yeah, and, I mean, it, yeah. It, it, it doesn't have to be super obscure, but, but you know, every, if you listen to us, you probably know Sweet Jane. Uh, you probably know Walk on the Wild Side. You probably know uh, Heroin, um, Rock and Roll, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Sunday morning I, is Sunday. I don't know. Sunday morning might be up for grabs. It might be yeah, one of those. Uh, yeah, trust trust your gut. Yeah, just yeah but yeah. yeah. So so where the line is is a little bit fuzzy. But 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 you know there's there's some that you definitely know, and they won't be the ones being discussed next week. The uh, Lou Reed comedy record. <laughs> yeah yeah. If there's. <laughs> That uh, that one time that Lou Reed did stand up and it happened to be recorded, um, yeah, well, that's fair game. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Don't go looking for that. You <laughs> if you find it, call us at one eight hundred. Thank you. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I I I love Lou Reed. Love the Velvet Underground. Uh, gosh, flick! I, I I think we just recorded a a podcast. Yeah, we just did. <laughs> And and we'll do another one in a week. <laughs> that's how the that's how the magic happens. You just uh, just press record, just roll tape. You know, are there any kids out there that that are musicians, <laughs> aspiring <laughs> podcasters? <laughs> when you uh, when you press record, um, well, I, things good things don't always happen, but sometimes they do. With that, it's been Left to the Dial podcast. <laughs> I'm Richard Shirk in Oakland, California. And I'm flicking in beautiful uh, sunny Des Moines, which it <laughs> really is. It really is this week. Okay. Well, as always, it's great to catch up with you, buddy. Yeah, good to catch up with you, and we'll do it again next week. See you next week.